What is snaking? You articulate board game and superstars and sages. Thanks so much for tuning in with me. I'm Michael Eldridge, and I'm taking a look at a favorite game of mine that is for one to two players. Solitaire or cooperative or two player competitive. It is triple lock. The intention of this video is simply to read through the rules of the game, not to explain it like a proper tutorial. There are other videos and people out there doing that and they're doing a great job. But with this, if you're an auditory audio listening ear sound in your ear type learner like me, then I think this might work for you or at least help supplement your deeper understanding of the game. I may be adding some commentary, but I suspect for most of it, simply reading through will be will be enough. Let's jump into this rulebook here, which we should note is version 1.1, which means it has some corrections, additions, and little tweaks that were not in the initial 1.0 version. As of this upload date for this video, this is the latest version that is available on BoardGameGeek.com. So keep that in mind as we move along. The Lock a simple mechanism meant to protect whatever is on the other side, a means to keep out undesirables and a symbol of for all that is off limits for the downtrodden and oppressed of New London. It's no wonder then that the citizens of this corrupt and diseased city spend their days learning to open locks by any means necessary. Six residents of New London have caught the attention of a mysterious figure interested in their unique lockpicking talents. An unusual summons has been issued to each by way of a strange lockbox, with no more than a time and location inscribed on the bottom. For these six, it's clear a larger game is afoot. Welcome to Trip Lock, a simple yet not so simple abstract challenge of skill and memory from Chip Theory Games. Choose to play solo as you work with the stranger to delve deeper into the unknown secrets of the royal company, or hone your skills even further against another master lockbreaker while you wait for the right moment to act. Either way, you'll be racking your brain to solve locks amidst a corrupt world full of intrigue and mystery. Thank you to all who made this possible, our families, friends, and backers, Josh, Adam, and Gilly. Uh, Gilly. Josh. On this initial page here, we have a look at the box contents as the components of the game. As everyone has noted, the components of this game are nothing short of breathtaking. It is a truly, uh, truly attractive game. And the pieces are incredibly durable as well. Everything from the chips to the cards. The dice are terrific as well, and we have a number of different cards providing simply thematic information as well. Even though this game is very much an abstract game that could be devoid of theme, it is gushing and leaking with hints and suggestions of theme. Even though the mechanisms of the game are truly not meant to represent anything other than literal represent uh, mechanisms of a, a lock objective players complete um, excuse me players compete to be the first to solve the master lock in head-to-head -head play solving the master lock is accomplished by being the first to complete five diagrams excluding traps and countermeasures or earn 10 points ending the game in solo and co-op play you must complete all challenges room cards in the episode without running out of available characters to win. So it's important to note just how different those are. And competitive play is arguably simpler because it's always the same rules. Whereas in solo and co-op play, you are playing based on the rules of the given room, which is in the given scenario. There are benefits and negatives to both ways of playing in terms of ease of getting into an explanation and depth set up for both one or two players. Lay down the master lock, neoprene mat, in the middle of your play area. Shuffle the mechanisms, four yellow chips, also separately 
shuffle the fail safes. Eight black chips, taking care that the chip backs, golden gears, are facing up for each chip. Without studying the chips, place a fail safe on top of and underneath of each mechanism, with the chip backs facing out, like a sandwich with only the golden gear showing making four separate stacks of three chips each. Players take turns flipping and mixing all four stacks while opponent looks away. Then on the master lock, place three stacks on the visible lock area, grouping of three spots for stacks, and the fourth stack on the hidden lock area, unique spot. These are all lined up in a row. A takeaway from that is you have three Spots kind of, a, you know, a key and a line, and then a fourth hidden one at the end of that. It, the other takeaways as well, of course, but for both solo and two-player games, players start the game with one diagram card. It's the objective you have to complete. Secretly choose which sequence, a sequence, one of four on the card of the diagram to pursue, and place the card face down. It is very important to pay special attention to card orientation in this game. Your chosen sequence should always appear at the top when the card is turned face up, like opening a book. And of course, when you have it assigned, it'll be face down so that your opponent will not see which diagram you have and which orientation, which specific objective you're trying to accomplish. It's also a memory thing, of course, even one player. You have to remember what it is. This game's very much good at flexing your memory, something I'm naturally quite bad at. Here we have another visual. This one demonstrates the setup for the game. I'll leave it here just for a moment. The stack example does a pretty good job of showing how they each indeed, every stack is like a sandwich with the golden gears obscuring what's underneath, creating a barrier so you can't see the hidden mechanism underneath easily. Players may also choose a character to play. Characters introduce further strategy into the game but are not required for head-to-head -head play. Character cards are placed in front of each player, as shown. Also, each player, even if not playing with a character, gets a skill bead to use. These look like little glass beads. Decide who starts the game by who has last opened a lock in real life, even with a key. Players will each take turns until someone wins by reaching 10 points or 5 completed diagrams. In solo play, the episode room cards will provide further setup instructions and win conditions. Gameplay, diagrams. Completing diagrams will be key to your success in Triplock. First, let's take a closer look at these diagrams and how they are used. Types. The majority of the diagrams in Triplock are standard diagrams. These are identified on the back of each card with four different sets of symbols called sequences. There are also there are two other types of diagrams, traps and countermeasures that will be discussed at the end of this section. Choosing a sequence, just like your starting diagram, each time you draw a new diagram, you must, sec you must secretly select an initial sequence, one of four on the card, and place the card face down. To complete this diagram, you will use actions during your turn to identify and then manipulate the mechanism symbols slash stacks on the master lock to collect the required failsafes or to match your chosen sequence. There are three types of sequences you can choose on standard diagrams. Collect is the first. Completed by collecting using the di uh, diagnose and disarm action, the correct symbol and number of failsafe chips. Discard them from play when completing the diagram. These are the only type of chips, by the way, that you collect into your inventory of sorts. And you can collect these as part of that action, the diagnose and disarm. 
but of course, as it mentions, once you use them to complete a diagram, they're spent and no longer on the lock or in your inventory. Combo. This is the next kind. Completed by matching the correct mechanism in left to right order in the visible lock area. L to R is based on your orientation of the mat. If fewer than three mechanisms are involved, they don't need to be next to each other in the visible lock area to be considered in left to right order. So it is possible that they could skip some if there are fewer than three, of, because three is the max for the visible order, uh, the visible lock mechanism area. Trip, completed by matching the correct mechanism in your visible lock area in no particular order. It does not have to be left or right. So there, just to recap, the three types are collect. You simply get that many fail-safe tokens of the right kind. Combo, which is probably the most difficult, getting the left to right exact. And trip, which is getting the matching mechanism com uh, combination, but they don't have to be in the correct order. Next, completing a diagram. Once you have collected the correct fail-safes, or you think... Excuse me for a moment. Pardon me. Once you have collected the correct fail-safes, or you think you have the matching mechanism symbols showing in the visible lock area, even if they are still covered by fail-safes, you may attempt to complete the diagram. When doing so, always announce, announce it, then reveal the diagram sequence by flipping over your diagram, like opening a book, for all to see. If completing a collect sequence, discard from play the correct failsafe symbols from your disarmed failsafe stack. If completing a combo or trip sequence, one at a time, Declare a mechanism from your chosen sequence and then reveal the matching symbol within the visible lock area. You cannot use mechanisms in the hidden lock area to complete diagrams of the master lock. If a mechanism you are matching is covered by a failsafe, temporarily lift the failsafe chip to expose the mechanism underneath. If it does not match, stop immediately discard the diagram, and end your turn. Now, I should note that if I add any commentary that turns out to be misleading or not quite right, please correct me in the comments. But what I will note from what I've seen on Board Game Geek is just to clarify, when you're checking for a combo or trip, you can lift up that failsafe to expose the mechanism to make sure you got it, but you can't flip the mechanism itself to look underneath it. So what is currently face up, if you will, whether it's covered or not, is what you're looking at. Even if it's the right mechanism on that particular stack, if it's face down, it won't count toward your combo or trip sequence that you're trying to complete. And as it says here again, if it does not match, stomp immediately. Discard the diagram and end your turn. Continuing. If you manage to correctly match all mechanisms shown on your chosen diagram sequence, you may immediately gain its rewards. For example, points, actions, etc. These rewards must be used at this time. Completing a diagram does not end your turn if you are successful. After completing, you may continue your turn where you left off, Place completed diagrams in front of you near your character card to track your progress. Multiple diagrams may be completed each turn, as long as they are correctly completed. So that's interesting that it's possible to complete multiple. Drawing diagrams. In addition to your starting diagram, more diagrams may be gained through the diagnose and disarm action or as a reward for completing certain diagram sequences. A player may have up to three diagrams in play at any given time. If a fourth is drawn, discard one. Altering a diagram. 
You may view your own face-down diagrams at any time throughout the game. However, to alter the orientation of your diagram to a new sequence, you need, to, uh, you need the diagram action to do so. Trap Diagrams A trap is a unique type of diagram. When drawn, it functions like a standard diagram in these ways. It is placed face down in diagram area with a specific orientation. It counts toward diagram limit of three, and it may be revealed, concealed, altered, or discarded. A trap is unique because it is instantly triggered when its chosen orientation incident occurs. At this time, show your trap, take your reward, and discard the trap. This does not count as a completed diagram. I note that it's more like literally setting up a trap but for the, uh, uh, the trigger of the trap is what would otherwise be the objective of a given sequence. If they happen to have this combination out, you can show your trap and then prove that it's been triggered and thus the consequences happen. What I don't quite remember is whether or not you can say, aha, a trap has now been triggered because some mechanism stacks were moved, but then do you still lift them one by one in order to prove? I believe so, and since it doesn't specify otherwise, I think that's the case. No one should have to just trust anyone that the trap was triggered. Countermeasure diagrams, next section. A countermeasure is another unique type of diagram. When drawn, it functions like a standard diagram in these ways. You place it in the diagram area with a specific orientation. It counts toward the diagram limit of three, and it may be altered or discarded. A countermeasure is unique because it must always be played face up and is instantly triggered when its chosen orientation incident occurs. At this time, take your reward. A countermeasure is not completed or discarded when triggered. Instead, it is left where it is and can be triggered multiple times until discarded by you or your opponent. So this is very interesting because it be, it's a defense in the sense that your opponent is trying to avoid having that combination out because they can see it so they know what that countermeasure is. But And also, unlike a trap, even though it can be triggered at any time, even the opponent's turn, it doesn't go away once triggered. It could be uh, triggered multiple times. If you get confused while playing, or you're quite new, it's all right to play without traps and countermeasures in your early games, and perhaps for some people, they'll always prefer it that way. But everyone is different. Gameplay. On your turn. Now that you understand how diagrams work, let's look at how you can manipulate the master lock on your turn to aid you in completing those diagrams. So diagrams are what tend to be how you will win a given scenario, usually, but not always. Sometimes it's just down to the points, and diagrams can give points, or some other factor. And there's certainly how you win against an opposing player. I think it's either five diagrams or ten points, and again, each diagram is worth other points. But here is where we actually go into before the objective complete, how you complete the objective, how you do your moment to moment, day to day, if you will, turns. Here we go. On your turn, you will be able to do all of the following and in any order. Roll and execute actions. Attempt to complete diagrams. Use a skill. So you can do all of these in any order. Roll and execute actions. Roll the two action dice. This can only be done once per turn. Use each die result individually to perform one or both of the actions that you rolled. Or sacrifice both rolled actions to select any one action from the list on the following page. 
It's also shown on your re action reference card and perform it. So you can do both of the actions, one after another, that the action dice allow you. Or you can simply do one action of your choice, but only one. So that's the breakdown of actions. And as I understand it, it's quite possible to break up in um, the actions, like do one action, and then complete a diagram, and then do another action. I believe you just can't break in the middle of doing an action, even though you can break in the middle of two actions. First action you can do, peek. Peek at any two mechanisms in the visible or hidden lock areas and their fail safes. Now I had understood it to be that it could only be in the visible area, but this is 1.1. So please someone correct me in the, in the comments if this is no, no longer the case or if this is the most up-to-date information. I know that there was some, not controversy, but some confusion over what some of the actions did. So nailing down that core feature is obviously perhaps the most important thing. So someone, uh, if you would, please correct me and I'll add a comment about that if, if it's supposed to be, if it's supposed to be only the visible lock area. But right here it says, peek at any two mechanisms in the visible or hidden lock area and their fail safes. Top fail safe only. That means when you peek at it, you just lift the top of the sandwich and look at the mechanism in the middle but you don't see the bottom of that mechanism. Now that being said, the mechanisms, the core mechanisms, you can kind of figure out by the reference card what's on the other side of them. But still, it could affect the other failsafe on the other side as well, the blocking piece. So that would be too much information if you also flipped it. The next action is called flip. Flip any one mechanism stack within the visible lock area. So it doesn't say look at it, it doesn't say move it or rotate it, you simply flip it. But it could be visible uh, in the visible lock area. The next one says swap. This one, swap. Swap or switch any two mechanism stacks within the visible lock area. The next action you can do, diagnose and disarm. Disarm a failsafe, that's the blocking chip, if present, from on top of any mechanism within the visible lock area. So you couldn't take off a bottom failsafe um, unless it had already been flipped and now it's top. And then after you do that, you also draw a new diagram. To disarm a failsafe, remove and place it face down in front of your disarmed failsafe stack. So that's how you gain the inventory of disarmed failsafes uh, that can be used for completing some kinds of objectives. Expose. Expose is the action where you peek at the mechanism within the hidden lock area and its failsafe, top chip, uh, top chip only. Flip that stack, then rotate all four mechanism stacks. You must do all three steps. To rotate stacks, shift each stack one position to your left and move the leftmost stack to the opposite end of stacks being rotated. And remember, in solo play, there is an appointed orientation about whether the hidden lock area is on the left or the right. But in two player, competitive or cooperative, it's obviously going to be on either direction and therefore rotating it to your left will be different for each player facing the board. It's a complicated one. It's the one where you do the most to the chip. So I'll repeat it one more time. Again, that's expose. Peek at the mechanism within the hidden lock area and its failsafe, top chip only. Flip that stack. Then rotate all four mechanism stacks 
you must do all three steps. To rotate, uh, to rotate stacks, shift each stack one position to your left and move the leftmost stack to the opposite end of stacks being rotated. The final action you can do with dice actions is diagram. Choose one of these. Reveal, conceal, or alter any lock diagram, including opponent's diagrams. Reveal. That is when you flip a diagram over for all to say. It stays this way until it is completed or concealed. The next is conceal. Flip a diagram over so it is hidden. It stays this way until it is completed or revealed. Countermeasures cannot be concealed. That is important. They are always face up. And again, if I remember what we read earlier, it's that you can look at your own diagrams at any time as long as you don't change the orientation without the rules to allow you to, such as action. Then alter. Alter is when you rotate a diagram to any side without changing its state of concealment, hidden or revealed, effectively changing the orientation and therefore sequence needed for completion. So it's where you switch an objective by picking a different side of your diagram. Clarifications on multi-part actions. Actions with more than one step. When performing a multi-part action, in other words, peak, diagnose and disarm, and expose, you must perform any parts that are possible. Example, it's not allowed to use the expose action and only peek at the hidden mechanism while skipping the other parts of that action. Multi-part actions can still be performed even if not all parts are possible to perform. For example, you may still perform the diagnose and disarm action to draw a diagram even if there are no more fail-safes to disarm. If using both action dice rolls, you may split up your actions. For example, you may use one entire action and then attempt to complete a diagram before using the other action. However, multi-part actions must be completed entirely if possible before doing anything else. For example, you may not use part of your peak action on one mechanism, then use the skill, and then finish your peak action by peaking at a second mechanism. So a, another simple way of saying that is that you can interrupt multiple actions, but you can't interrupt a single action. Every action is treated as a single unit from beginning to end that can't be interrupted. Attempts to complete a diagram. That is another one of the parts of your turn. Again, the parts of your turn are complete, attempt to complete a diagram, actions, and skill bead, I think it said. Uh, no, uh, yeah, 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 forgive me, that's great. So attempt to complete a diagram discussed in detail on page seven. We're past that, so it was explained how you can attempt to do that, showing one stack after another until you're right or wrong, and if you're wrong, your turn would end at that point. Up next is use a skill. Skills may only be used once per turn. These require the use of a skill bead to show which skill is being used. There are four ways you may use your skill. Points, PTS. Place or advance your bead along the PTS track of the master lock. You must start at the first position and advance only one position each turn. Once you advance your bead to the third position, you instantly gain two points. If your skill bead is removed prematurely from the track, you will lose all progress. If completing this track this turn, remove the bead from the track after taking your two points. So that's on that points track you can see there. It would take one turn to place, uh, one turn to move, and then another turn to move for three total turns, but getting you a bonus of two points.
The next track is the action or ACT act track. Place or advance your bead along the act track of the master lock. You must start at the first position and advance only one position each turn. Once you advance your bead to the second position, you may immediately roll a single action die that may be used at this time. Cannot be combined the way you could combine two dice to get any choice you want. If your skill bead is removed prematurely from this track, you will lose all progress. If completing this track this turn, after action is taken, remove the bead from the track and hold for next turn. So typically speaking, this one being too long will take one to place and one to move to completion. Thus, if you always put your skill bead here, every two turns, you could get an extra dice roll, an extra die roll. Reset. Reset is where you must discard one of your disarmed failsafes to place your skill bead on your reset position of the master lock. Your opponent must immediately move his or her skill bead to their reset position as well and must skip the use a skill option during their next turn. So I had forgotten that you have to use a failsafe. You have to discard it from your inventory, remove it, in order to place your skill bead on the reset. But it makes them have to take their skill bead off also, and they can't use it next turn. That's good if they have a special power for their character skill, and that's what's up next here. Character skill. Each character in Triplock has a unique skill. Follow the directions on your character's card to learn how and when it can be used. And of course, keeping in mind, typically speaking, the skills require your skill bead, meaning that if you put it on your character to do that skill, they're not able to place it on one of those two skill bead tracks. Scoring by solving locks and taking points. Each player has a points card that they place next to their character card using the key icon on the character card as a pointer toward their current score. As you earn points from completing diagrams or with your skill points track, immediately adjust your points card to indicate your new total. This key pointing towards the points track thing is pretty clever, but of course really you could count and maintain your score any way you like. But there's certainly nothing wrong with this kind this way. Gaming etiquette tip number one. How to peek at a mechanism. Cup your hand, cup hand and cover mechanism stack on opponent's side. Lift and angle the top failsafe chip to reveal the bottom side of the failsafe chip and the mechanism chip. Place failsafe chip back. That's how you would peek. Gaming etiquette number two. What if I bump a mechanism stack? If a player accidentally reveals sides of a chip, both players must have a chance to see what was spotted by one. Try not to bump again. Oh, how often those words have been used at Walmart. Try not to bump again. Who's this cool, handsome fellow with leather gloves? He's one of the characters. Solo episodes. For example, the station, the factory, etc. The solo play and head-to-head -head use the same game setup and the same rules for action dice, diagrams, and your skill bead. However, there are a few key differences. Read the large location card, see the station, to get a feel for this setting, and learn how many characters you can bring along for this episode. Stack the smaller room cards, the station, room 1 through 4, in order. Refer to each room card for specific setup instructions and win conditions. As you progress through the episode, you will select which character you'd like to use for each specific room. Each character may only be used once during the episode, success or fail. If you fail a room, you may select a new character and try again. However, 
Once you are out of characters, you must reset the entire episode and try again. Complete all rooms consecutively with your available characters to claim victory. Solo setup. Indicated on the room card. Select one of your available characters for this challenge. Prepare the master lock. Reshuffle, mix, and set up your stacks. Make sure the hidden lock area of the master lock mat is on your right side. That is for a solo setup, of course. Uh, also, be sure to use your points card and rounds card when needed for the room you are in. Trap and countermeasure cards are not used for solo and co-op play unless specified in the room card. So unless otherwise said, trap and countermeasure cards are only used in two-player competitive version. I'd also note that how important the rounds card and the points card is will depend on the scenario and room you're in. Co-op setup indicated on the room card. Select two of your available characters for this challenge. Each will have its own diagram area and skill bead. Challenges requiring co-op setup can be played by one player controlling both characters or by two characters or two players. Three player setup provided by Ricky Royal. Ricky Royal is a legendary YouTube star who does a great job of doing solo playthroughs of games. Place three master locks like wheel spokes, see image, cover the two leftmost positions with your chosen character, large card. Each player will sit between two spokes and their master lock will be made from two mats in front of them. The hidden mechanism will always be the rightmost position for each player. Using components from a single trip lock game, shuffle and create four mechanism stacks. Place these stacks onto four of the six available mat spots. Using a second copy of trip lock, shuffle and create four more mechanism stacks. Randomly choose two uh, of these for the remaining mat spots. You are ready to play. It's important to note that even though you don't use all of the components, in order to play, you must have three copies of the game. This is a very ambitious way of playing that I've not tried yet. Important. Dice actions that affect mechanism stacks can only be applied to the four stacks in front of you. However, diagram rewards that offer flips and swaps are not limited to the four stacks in front of you. And then we have credits at the end. Take a look at them here. It's worth giving credit and respect to the fine people who have put together and brought this game to us. That's the end. If you want to stop here, thank you so much for watching. All that is a little bit of additional commentary. That so much of what makes this game special is the beautiful aesthetics, the rich amber colors tied and married with a fresh take on steampunk, a more new, a more... Uh, interesting intriguing steampunk world and it's one that's only hinted at if anything it makes me want to read books and novels written within this specific universe i'll also note that i think of all the steampunk universes out there it perhaps reminds me aesthetically the most of the thief video games like thief deadly shadows and how appropriate as well since that has lock picking in it as well I'm a huge fan of this game and I hope you'll check out other videos I have on this and other games and pursuits. As always, please feel free to like and subscribe and leave comments of your choice. And until next time, I will see you on the other side of the lock.